Where's my mom? Yes. You know, I, I guess first and foremost, I, I'm feeling the power of prayer. Uh, the thousands and thousands of people that have prayed for me, who have fasted for me, who have carried me through 29 years. I mean, there's nothing like the power of God. You know, and uh, and that this this moment right here, this crowd right here, these people, you know, this is this is what that power feels like and looks like. Uh, outside of that, I'll, you know, after 29 years to put my feet on the ground, and uh, I'm just so happy. You know, I'm ready. I'm, I'm ready to go and see my family and, and my friends and go spend some time with some people that. You know, and I've said this many times, but I want to hug my mom for more than 45 seconds, because that's all you're allowed in prison is 45 seconds, and, uh, you know, I want to hug mom for more than 45 seconds. Who would you ask for when you got out right away? Uh, where's my mom? <laughs> I don't see my mom. You know, I've got a piece of paperwork for my mom. <laughs> Signed by Judge Phillips. Suitable for framing. Yeah, she's right behind so, you. Good, you can carry the duffel bag. Five seconds is up. The 45 cents seconds are up. <laughs> Barry, when you woke up this morning, did you actually think that this would happen, that this moment would happen, or did you still have doubts? Well, actually, this morning when I woke up, I'd been up most of the night praying because of uh, the release yesterday from the Attorney General's office asking for a stay. Uh, you know, of course, that raised alarm. You know, this, to come this far and then have the Attorney General's office take that position. Uh, was concerning, but uh, in 1984, May 11th of 1984, I walked into Montana State Prison and immediately they put me in maximum security lockdown. Uh, I was two cells down from death row inmate Duncan McKenzie. I was Kitty Porter from Duncan uh, death row inmate Ron Smith, and I had two death row inmates in my back vent. And I, I went to God in prayer that night. And I asked him to assure me that someday this was going to happen. And that night I had three dreams. And in each one of them dreams I saw myself walking out of prison. And one of them I actually walked down the back steps of a courthouse and they don't even have steps. But uh... <laughs> <laughs> So throughout those 29 years of fighting, you know, I've always known that God was going to do it. But man, the disappointments along the way and, the, you know... Uh, the setbacks, they, they cause you to question everything sometimes, you know. Uh, time spent in maximum security, I spent a lot of time in lockup, uh, you know, and for different reasons. And uh, and sometimes, you know, you, you get to questioning everything at times like that, you know. Uh, but I want to thank God most of all and my supporters because this isn't just it. Uh, I don't know if everybody knows, but there's thousands and thousands of supporters around the world right now that are waiting for tweet messages and Facebook messages, whatever that is. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know uh, but most of all, I just want to give glory to God. I want to praise God that carried me through. What are you going to so, do now, Barry? Hug my mom and eat a good meal. Uh, <laughs>
and try to you get know, our feet on the ground here. Yeah. One of the things uh, that I'm still committed to, I'm not the only innocent inmate in the United States prisons. I'm not the only person that a, a confession wrongfully taken put behind bars. There are experts on false confessions around the world now at different universities and stuff, and uh, they have outlined seven criteria to identify a false confession. And I want to put some, put forth my effort with many other people to make sure that those criteria on false confessions get written into law, so that we can keep other people from having to go through what I went through. It's not made for human beings. Prisons aren't made for human beings. God didn't create us to do this to each other. And if I can, I want to help somebody else, you know. You know, from Oprah Winfrey to President Obama and many other people, they all talk about passing it on. And that's what we have to do. We all have to pass it on. Somewhere along the line, there's going to be somebody else who is innocent and needs help, and we have to be there for them. You know, we have to stand up for their rights, just like you people stood up for me. You know, because if you wouldn't have stood up for me, I'd still be behind bars, you know. And thank you to all you media. You've been awesome in standing for the right of justice. And people like yourselves, people in this crowd, this is a picture that the United States of America still believes in the difference between right and wrong. And that when a wrong's been done, you correct it. Barry, when I talked to you uh, after the judge's order, you said that uh, there was a part of you that, that still couldn't believe it. You told your mom, Mom, is this for real? Uh, what what are you feeling right now? I mean, is there a part of you that has a hard time believing after 29 years that you're out in the sunshine? Not now. <laughs> uh, you guys, most of you missed it, but uh, the Roosevelt County Sheriff's deputies asked if they could walk me across the street. And they took that privilege from you guys, but we actually got to walk, and my first steps of freedom were right across the street and down. You know, uh, just praise God. Yeah. What was that first step like that you just found? A little weak in the knees. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, where's Jim McCluskey? Oh, he's got the bag. He's got the bag. What's with the Redskins, Barry? Yeah. I'm wearing Daryl Green's jersey. Uh, I was arrested. I was arrested in January of 1983, and that was the same year that Daryl Green was recruited as a rookie for the Washington Redskins, and he went on to play for 16 years. But uh, anybody who's been to Poplar, Montana, I'm wearing Poplar Indian colors. <laughs> go, I'm go Eagles, Barry. Go Eagles. I know, I'm going to get you here in a bit. <laughs> Hey, Barry, you, you, might, got a napkin right here. Barry, you mind if we walk over in front of the courthouse and take photos? No, the not courthouse? at all. Not at all. Can we do that? Yeah. All right, let's go. But uh, just to finish on the Redskins, so I've been a Redskins fan since I was in sixth or seventh grade because these are the same colors as the Popper Indians. And that's, you know, I have 28 years. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh.